Ladies and gentlemen, how y'all doing? It's your friend Sam aka Gently, but you already know what this is. Come on, don't pretend like you don't know what you're here for. Welcome back to another episode of Don't Starve, Reign of Giants, Season 6, Episode 1. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what this is for some reason and you haven't looked back to our backlog and checked what we've played before, this is Reign of Giants. This is just what I said it is. Um, it's kind of the staple series here on the April Place channel. Uh, over the course of two, maybe three years at this point, uh, I've made almost 300 videos of Don't Starve, probably 250 episodes, close to 250 straight up episodes of uh, Don't Starve Rain of Giants on this channel and on my other channel. Um, so yeah, I've done a lot of Don't Starve content through the years. And um, if you watch the channel recently, within the past two, maybe, yeah, probably two weeks, um, it is by this point, two weeks. If you've watched the channel at all in the past two weeks, you obviously know that I died in a day 204 run, which is regrettable. Uh, and ever since then, two weeks ago, I've had an itch. I've had an itch to get back into the game. Why have I had an itch to get back into this game that I've put so much time into? Well, uh, that is because of a friend, a friend, a real life friend I have, Michael. Shout out to Michael. I know you're probably watching this uh, just because... Uh, I know you like the videos, I guess you could say, and you like playing the game, and I know you got into the game uh, because it's a really awesome game, uh, and I, I know you like watching the videos, and I really appreciate that. So, Michael, this one goes out to you, uh, but without further ado, this season of Don't Starve, season six, in fact, uh, we have a very special thing planned. Instead of doing a conventional run of Don't Starve that could go on for any amount of episodes, we are going to set... A goal for this for this series for this season of don't starve I recently thought of a challenge a challenge that I could do on the channel called the biome runner challenge uh, now this challenge is a challenge that you've probably seen in many forms throughout many survival games uh, I think specifically uh, biome runner challenge that I I watched a while ago like a long long time ago was syndicates uh, biome runner challenge on minecraft now i'm not a huge fan of minecraft videos anymore back then i was i saw that he did a biome runner challenge and that was a challenge to pretty much not make a base anywhere and just to run across the biome see how long he could survive in hardcore mode and i think that's what we're gonna do for this we are gonna try to make it to day 50 our goal is day 50 we're gonna try to make it to day 50 by just roaming around the world now many people think that this is impossible I think it's very possible uh, day 50 by the time we hit day 50 we I believe don't quote me on this but we're gonna be at the beginning of our next cycle of seasons so if we get through all four seasons of don't starve by running across the world I think that it's gonna make for a pretty awesome season of don't starve so right away we start up um, there's not much else to say this is not gonna be your conventional run of don't starve this is actually my third attempt now at uh, starting up the new season of Don't Starve because of the fact that I didn't rem I promised myself I was gonna do this challenge like last week uh, I'm recording this on the 14th of March right after Friday the 13th ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, we I plan to do this series literally like last week and I started up a new series and I started up a random world of Don't Starve thinking that I was gonna play it normally and then I realized about, I, I remember this channel challenge and I was in a really good position I found beefaloes on day one the first episode of the series actually came out uh, actually uh, was finished recording I was about to throw it in editing and I remembered it and it was really really good commentary is really fun commentary and I remember going on a lot of hilarious tandem tangents tangents really tangents in terms of like my talking abilities my I don't, know, I don't even remember, man. We talked about different YouTubers and their, how they're so good at commentating and how we're utter garbage because we can't manage to get through a sentence without saying the word um and all these other things. And I was really, 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 really jazzed about doing that the rest of that series, even though we weren't playing my favorite character in the world. Uh, but I was so jazzed about playing that character. Or I, was, I was so jazzed about playing A New World of Don't Starve. And then we realized that we were going to do the Biome Runner Challenge. And then I felt sad. So that's where we are with this. Four minutes in, I'm already rambling because reasons. This is a really huge pond biome. Once it starts raining, this place is going to suck. So I am definitely going to try not to make my way back here if I cannot at all help it. So yeah, day 50, just roaming around. 
I haven't had any practice in terms of this in terms of this um in terms of this challenge. I haven't liter I've literally haven't done like anything in terms of me trying to do this off camera or anything. This is my first attempt at doing this. We're probably going to have to do this on more than one occasion. I'm foreseeing that the second we hit winter, we're going to have a panic attack and I don't want to say we're going to cave to make a base, uh but I'm just, we there's a very high chance that we're going to die at the beginning of winter or beginning of summer cuz it's so freaking hard to move around during the summer season, man. Like it's not okay. Like obviously we're going to have to have some semblance of a base well quote unquote base because we need to throw down a science machine and an alchemy engine but that's something that we're gonna have to think about late later on uh, yeah that's what we're gonna have to do and I, I hate I hate saying um now I'm so self-conscious about saying um now because I've been really really watching other youtubers and how they commentate and how they play and do their videos and a trend that I've been noticing is that they all have these little quirks they have quirks uh, that go with their voice uh, and the way they talk and a lot of youtubers default to the normal uh, thing of saying um a lot or uh which is what I just did in that sentence a lot of youtubers say uh a lot and that's it's not something that necessarily completely annoys me because I understand I understand that it's quite it's not necessarily impossible it's quite possible if you really really try but if you're doing it in a casual setting, it's really hard to not say a uh, a filler word like um or uh or you like smack your lips or you say another thing or you cough or grunt or I don't even know, man. Whatever. Beefaloes, I'd usually be super excited to see this on day one. But right now, I'm freaking not. And I'm glad I finally got a stupid piece of flint, man. I'm just going to mine this. I wouldn't usually mine this. We're not playing conventionally right now. We're not playing as we usually would. So I'm, I need that flint so I can throw down a campfire. So yeah, the main thing that we're going to be using throughout this is going to be a campfire. And I'll probably end up throwing down a, a fire pit at some point in the game out of necessity. Because I need to build something, say, during the night. And I have to run back to my science machine area. Alchemy engine area, crockpot area, all that jazz, and I have to cook or something, or I have to build something, and I'm gonna be panicking, so I'm gonna have to make a fire pit. So that's the thing. But yeah, what was I saying? I, I went on a tangent there for some reason because of the gameplay and the game we were playing. But essentially, what a lot of YouTubers default to in terms of the filler words that they use while they're commentating is um or uh, or they smack their lips, or they just have long bouts of silence. I want to try to fix mine, and mine is really just me saying a lot of ly words, the adverbs, ly adverbs, so like really or essentially or any other word with ly. I do that a lot, and I say um a lot. So the goal for this recording is to say um as little as possible, not including the times that I say um uh, to kind of, and I just said it again, dang it. While I was referencing it. Isn't that hilarious? That's the weirdest thing to me that I say it when I'm intentionally saying a sentence that doesn't involve it at all. I've taken speech classes. Don't get me wrong. I've taken a lot of speech class, or I'm, I've taken one speech class. I'm in, I'm in high school currently. I took speech class sophomore year. I'm a junior now. So I took, I took speech class last year. And the thing that was covered during speech class, even though I hated it because of the teacher, the teacher was also the principal of the school because uh, that is a thing that happens at my school. The thing that was discussed at length, oh, stupid Tim, stop going on dumb tangents and freaking do what you need to do, you idiot. I need to, oh, I should probably make a fire. I really should make a fire because this is just stupid. Yeah, let's make a fire. I always forget that early on. Yeah, I think that was, the, see, there was my long bout of silence. A thing that was discussed greatly in terms of that speech class was the fact that a lot of public speakers and a lot of just speech makers in general have a lot of filler words they are they use they default to if they're not writing something that's scripted and even if they are writing some or saying something that's scripted they often say the filler word if they forget what they were gonna say so that's something that I really want to work on as a commentator 
because an air of professionalism is something that I'm very much lacking in terms of my commentary. And, I mean, there is a factor of if you don't say, uh, and if you don't have any amount of time to kind of collect your thoughts, you end up going on really, really hardcore tangents of thought, and just you derail off of whatever you're talking about, and you just go crazy and you say some idiotic stuff. In terms of that, I would like to try to avoid that too, but there is, because obviously there is a balance between not saying um every five seconds and not having anything relevant to talk about for extended periods of time. So obviously there are going to be tiny bouts of silence throughout uh, certain certain moments, but if I can avoid saying um or uh as much as possible, it's going to make me a better commentator. Not only a better speaker, but also a better commentator. So that's something I got to think about as well. It doesn't help the fact, it doesn't help when I have um, a cough and a runny nose as I do right now. But that's besides the point. We're gonna keep running here. We're gonna keep doing what we need to do, and we're gonna we're gonna be successful in our endeavors and don't starve. I need some flowers right now. Totally forgot that it was the rainy season, and it's gonna be raining for long periods of time. If you watched the last season of Don't Starve, you know that I played as Willow, who has the passive sanity regen when she's near fire. Um, dang it, I did again. I have to stop acknowledging it too. That's not that's not something that I that's good either. But I've had I've had a I've gotten used to the fact for 200 days now that every time I drop sanity. I can regen it out of fire, and now I can't do that, so that's something I gotta readjust to in this game, because it's been a while since I've been this low, obviously. It's been a while since I've been this low uh, on the, our day counts, so it's weird to be in a position that I don't have a base to run to at, at, at all times. And for the foreseeable future, it's not we're not gonna have a base to run to, because we're doing the uh, the biome, the biome running challenge. So yeah, that's that's something I gotta do. One thing that I, I'm thinking that's gonna be a relatively good strategy for us going into this is to not pick up any carrots because carrots can be like a really, really important thing if you're just running around, uh, but they're not, you can't, you can't grow them, you can't cr grow carrots back unless you have a farm. So, that being said, I, I I literally just picked up a carrot as I said that. That's kind of... No, stop. Dang it. Dang it. Gobbler, why you do this to me? Why you do this to me, man? Not cool, bro. Not cool. Okay, I gotta remember where the beefaloes were. I think the beefalo... The, where the beefalo roam were right there. The, they were right there. I don't know if that was correct use of the word were or was for that matter. I'm going to stick with it and pretend that it didn't happen, even as I acknowledge that it happened as I speak. So I think my strategy going into this uh, new world and doing the Biome Runner Challenge is the fact that I'm going to try to stay in areas for as long as possible. I'm going to try to cover as much of any specific area as possible, because I think if I do that, I'll get more stuff covered. And if I get more stuff covered and I find more important things to my survivability will have a much higher chance of surviving uh, through like today 50 and that's what I'm thinking here obviously our big our big factor our big detriment is gonna be the two difficult seasons and if you know anything about don't starve and you know anything about uh, don't starve seasons because they are obviously one of the bigger factors in the game. I said uh probably like 30 times in the past 2 minutes and I'm quite re I'm quite I'm really regretting that cuz I totally forgot about it. But if you know anything about the two difficult seasons in Don't Starve Summer and Winter, you know that they're obviously difficult and you need to have a base to retreat to and to stay at if you're planning on surviving through that. But at this point, I'm going to do this for entertainment's sake, and I'm going to do this challenge, and I'm going to try to get to day 50, even though it's... I remember someone, and I know who it is, Michael, Michael, another reference to Michael. It's going to be a reoccurring character in this. Michael mentioned that it's pretty much impossible to do, the, to do what I'm trying to do here, and I don't think it's impossible. I think it's very, very possible. 
It's just a matter of pacing yourself and figuring out which areas to go at which times, figuring out how much inventory space you're using up with certain things that are not necessarily useful to you. I think summer is going to be our big big enemy throughout this throughout the course of this throughout the course of this challenge. Um winter I think could be difficult if we don't have a walking cane, which I'm hoping to pick up sooner than later. A walking cane definitely needs to be a thing that I need to pick up uh as soon as winter hits cuz I don't see myself surviving long periods of time if I don't have a walking cane in winter. I'll just die uh, probably five or ten days into it. But I'm thinking what we're gonna do here is just sweep the area, sweep every single area that we can find of supplies and just keep running and keep trying to find new areas. I don't know if this challenge is gonna extend below the caves. I feel like that's kind of cheating because if we go down into the caves, granted the caves are super hard uh, case in point our death in last season um wow that is that was a big big um that was a huge um and look at this fight look at this look at this this is race wars personified in a battle between pigs and fishmen to which i will reap the benefits of this is going to be a thing that's going to be really really tough for me having to traverse the swamp biomes, the merm biomes. This is gonna be a really, really, really annoying place to be uh, in the future. It's gonna really, really suck to be here. And I'm not gonna like it at all. In fact, smart thing to do right now would just be to ditch out of this area and to never come back. Or not to come back until we absolutely need to. He says as he runs directly face first into it. This is not a good place to, to lay base for the night. I won't lie to you. If we want a death sentence on day three, that's fine. I can do that. I can oblige. I can marry J. Blige. That's a singer, I think. I'm not well versed in music, man. I know Northern Lion NL is a big, big, big fan of music. And uh, he often makes many references to music in his videos. I am not so. I, in fact, uh, make more. You'll, you'll find me making more references to movies than anything else. Uh, in my commentary, and I know there's not that much to reference in movies when it comes to Don't Starve, but you know maybe it'll come up in in conversation every once in a while. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Cooked fish. I don't think I often eat cooked fish simply because I mean yes, it looks cool and that's always a fun thing to have, but it really doesn't give you it doesn't give you as much as you would think it gives you. If you were trapped in a survivor survivor situation like an on like an island or something you would think that if you're on an island fish would probably be your main source of things to ingest and don't starve however tis tis not so it is not so uh your main thing you want to get is just straight up meat pig meat rabbit meat all this stuff man beefalo meat vault goat meat they're all the same it all it's all gonna end up in the same place anyway i don't know what i'm talking about anymore if i'm to be honest with you all I know is that what I'm talking about probably isn't in any way informative of the game, and if it is, I'm quite surprised. Because, oh man, hold up, I gotta cough. Give me a second. Give me a GD second. I really shouldn't be recording right now. I have a, I've had a weird itch on my throat, and since I didn't go to PAX, quite fearful that the mentality of not going to PAX is giving me the PAX plague, which is weird because I plan to go to PAX next year, and by next year I literally mean 2016, not Prime, not next convention, but I, I plan to go to PAX, to PAX East or PAX Prime, one of the two, within the next, within the next year or two, so that's going to be interesting. What was I talking about? I, pr I can almost guarantee you that in the previous commentary, the previous episode that I was talking about, um, the previous run that I had that I recorded, I had better tangents than what I have right now. But the tangents that I have right now are relevant to what I'm talking, to what I'm thinking about. It's not like I can, I can duplicate commentaries on the fly. I never understood that reference. Yes, I do understand that reference or that saying. I'm just being an idiot right now. But on the fly, what is if you think about it, what does that even mean? 
Like, are you doing something on top of the wings of a fly? If so, I quite applaud you, sir, because the wings of a fly, of a fly are pretty dang tiny. And if you have the ability to do things on a fly, like you can stand on a fly without killing it, and you can carry out a certain task, whatever that task may be, I'm assuming it's juggling, because juggling is a thing that people equate skill to often. I don't know if that's true, I'm just saying words now. If, if, if you are in fact juggling on top of a fly without killing it, you need to get that recorded and post that shiz on YouTube. It's definitely going to do way better than this episode's going to do, because no one watches my content. I am a satire. Wow, that was... Oh man. Wow. We just <sighs> Sometimes I don't I don't understand what I'm talking about. And then other times I do understand what I'm talking about. It's just that I I would like to not like say the things. I don't know what I'm talking about, man. I just don't want to say um and in my quest to not say um, I'm saying dumb things. Does yeah, it's just it is what it is. Just the way it is. Just the way it is, something, 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 on the road again. That's not the song I'm looking for right now, but I'm still going to sing it because I'm an idiot. I'm a satire. Satire, man. Speaking of satire, Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods, great movie. I told you I was going to reference movies. Cabin in the Woods, freaking awesome movie. Everyone that I know in real life, in real life, like my close real life friends, hate the movie they really do they hate the movie this is going to be useful later oh the log suit is what i'm really excited about here they hate that movie everyone i know everyone i talk to hates that freaking movie i don't get it man it knows what it is it's it knows what it is it's a satire it's a satire on the horror movie genre i don't know if you guys heard that but i just farted i ain't even i ain't even embarrassed come fight me See if I care. Um, yeah, it's a satire on the horror movie genre. It knows what it is. And because it is self-aware and because it knows what it's trying to be, it's a good, solid movie. If it was a ho real horror movie trying to be a horror movie, we'd have a problem. Because it really isn't all that scary. It's straight up a satire. I don't know why people hate the movie. I don't. The internet likes the movie. I know for a fact the internet likes that movie. I spend a lot of time on the movie r slash movie or r, r, r slash movies r slash movies and I know for a fact that there is some semblance of love for that movie it's just I can for the life of me understand why people in my real life are so against that movie it's such it's a solid solid flick man I don't know why you get a hate on it so much also right now as in as I'm as I'm saying this, I gotta really take a dump. I do. I really gotta take a dump, and this is not okay. Yeah, this is this is really not good. I gotta take a huge, massive dump. I feel really bad about it too because Skype's going off. Skype's going off, and I just muted it, so it's all good. My tangents were a lot better, uh, like an hour ago. They were. They were a lot better an hour ago. What did I watch recently? I did watch a movie relatively recently. I can't pick that up, so that's fun. So we've covered a lot of this area. Let's, ah, screw it. We're just gonna move. We're gonna move south. Next episode, we're probably gonna run through this uh, swamp biome because that's something that needs to happen. Um, but yeah, what did I watch? What have I watched recently? I recently watched a movie. Oh, I watched this at the end. There we go. I watched this at the end. Solid comedy solid modern comedy um yeah i really like that movie is it pretty funny i'm not gonna lie uh it's very self-aware i i really like self-aware movies if you don't if you haven't guessed at this point but yeah we're already hitting the cap at what these episodes links would be so i'm gonna go ahead and end off this episode here just to keep things right usually i would go until the end of the night cycle but since it's the end of this episode uh, I usually end these episodes at 25 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and end this episode now. At the beginning of next episode, we're going to pick it up uh, on day four, the beginning of day four. So, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy the content you see and you want to see more of this series, leave a like and subscribe. You know it helps me out. 
and uh, comment. Comment and let me know what you guys think about the new Biome Runner series. That's going to be about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you at the beginning of day four in the next episode. Have a good one.